All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, good morning everyone. This is Amanda. Um, I'm from Effective Software. Uh, thanks very much for joining in on our webinar here today. Uh, I actually work with the sales and business development aspect of the business, uh, but I've got Michael Murray here with me who is going to um, go through all of the modules, whatnot, that you're going to focus on here today. He's with our customer success team. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, towards the end of the session, there will be some Q&A that we'll be able to go through with. I'll give you a little more details on that here following. So we're just going to get a start, uh, just in case you're not overly familiar with Effective Software here, just to give you an overview of the company in general. So uh, currently, we are the largest EHS compliance software in the UK and Ireland, just based on our customer numbers of 235. Um, we're a fairly quickly growing business here, um, 19 modules within the system basically that can be tailored and configured to suit your business and its specific needs. So that would be the highlight of the system um, in my mind is just the ability to configure many of the elements and Michael's going to touch on that a fair bit more here coming up. Um, the overall of the system though is a cloud-based solution. So where this is a benefit to you overall is that uh, you never have to update the system or have it match different types of devices that you're using. Uh, the software will always just be available on any browser uh, that you choose to use and it's continuously updated without an additional cost to yourself, which is always a benefit. Um, we work with a number of different clients across the UK and Ireland right now. Um, as you can see, a range of different industries, a range of different sizes. Uh, so the main takeaway that I feel with this is that um, our client base um, can basically reflect that the system is completely configurable. So um, if you've got a specific need in mind for yourselves that you're looking to see here, um, that Q&A will be an excellent time that you can kind of uh, send that over and we'll come back to you with an answer on how we could get that going for yourself. Now generally, um, in your line of work there, uh, being the safety officer that you are, you have to be working with some pretty antiquated systems or maybe processes that aren't as streamlined as you'd like them to be. So in general, what does that mean for you and your business? There might be a lack of oversight, uh, there might be a lack of confidence or trust in the information that you're getting back. So our goal is that we're going to be able to work with yourself and help alleviate some of those fears uh, and just make it a little bit easier for you to get the work done and maybe focus on some higher value tasks. So for the system in itself, typically with customers that we're working with, uh, what we see is that they're looking for something that will help them centralize the data. So they'll be able to keep that uh, basically consistent across all the sites there, but in the same time having something that's very easy to use that's going to enable them to pull the reports that they need, the KPIs, but also obviously be cost effective uh, to meet the business demands. So what are the benefits that we can hopefully help you uh, gain in your business? Um, greatly reducing the admin tasks, so duplication of work, um, maybe data entry, that sort of a thing, and, and again, focus on those higher value tasks. Minimizing the business risk is a huge one, obviously, um, hopefully by reducing incidents or better tracking of information, you're going to be able to reduce the business risk there in general. And then overall, that would help uh, reduce the cost claims. So as I mentioned here, I am going to pass this over to uh, Mike. Uh, he's going to be going through the four main modules, um, which are audits, incidents, risk assessments, and a training as well. And then he's also going to focus on our action management, so how that's going to tie through the whole system to help you keep on top of all your tasks, um, and then into the reporting module, which will kind of pull all the information back from those uh, modules that I mentioned. And then as I uh, said there, at the end, we're going to have a question session. So just keep all your questions there for the end, and we'll come back to you with those answers. So I'm going to pass it over to Mike now. How's it going, everyone? I'm just about to pull up my screen here now. So you should be seeing my screen coming up right now. So my name's Michael, as Amanda pointed out, and I'll be taking you through some technical aspects of the system itself. Um, so to start off, I'm just going to give you a brief overview. So this is our, our dashboard menu where you'll be able to see a number of our different modules on the system. So I've set up a demo user here and for today I'm going to focus on a couple of areas. Now there are 19 modules on the system so I'm going to go through four of the main modules we have and then show you how they link up to two sections which is the My Dashboard section and the Reporting section. 
I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what the actual My Dashboard section means. So no matter what user you are, if you want to log into the system and find out, let's say, any tasks or activities you've outstanding, you can just log on to the My Dashboard section. So this is where I'd go for, let's say, if I wanted to complete an action that was assigned to me that I have to do by next week, let's say. That's an example of um, how I'd go about completing that action. I'd log on to the system, click into my dashboard, and I'll show you exactly how that process works. So I'm just going to take you through those four modules I, ex I talked about earlier, which are incidents, training, audits, and risk. Now, I'll only touch on these briefly because I want to show you how they link up to the My Dashboard module and how they, how they look on the system briefly. So I'm going to start off with training. Okay, I'm going to click into training here now. And you should see a training matrix come up. So just a brief outlook at this. In the training module, we can actually set up courses. And those courses will link to all the employees you have on your own system so we can see whether they're compliant and you can see it's a little traffic light section here whether we can see whether they're compliant or non-compliant the training module also has a calendar section where you can uh, schedule people's training for the future and tick them off as being completed and maybe you need to attach training certs as well which is all possible within the software so just a brief glance at this. So if I zoom in here, I can just see a couple of the traffic lights and you can see I can filter my training matrix to show me what I want. So at the minute, I'm actually in the health and safety training category. So I can just see a couple of those modules. And if I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I just get a little compliance piece where I can see percentages and figures of how we're sort of doing in the, in the training section in this current site. So that's a brief outlook at training. So I'm just going to pass you over to the incident section. So this is another module we have. And what I'm showing you here is reporting an incident from scratch. So I've set up a little demo here. What, we, what I'd usually be involved with is the onboarding of customers onto the system. So it would be my job to maybe get an incident form or incident forms that um, that anyone would use and transfer them onto the system and basically allow all the system tools or whatever system tools you'd want on your incident form to appear to everyone who needs to use them. So this is an incident form. So let's say we're reporting just a, a basic injury. We'd just be able to add our incident types, classifications, and any other details such as date. You can see there's a calendar tab and a couple of questions underneath. So on the right hand side, we can see a couple of tools where you can add involved party, add equipment, add services and utility, and of course, add corrective actions, which are a huge part of the system. So throughout the system, you'll see that we can always add actions to maybe different areas or different modules. So they're essentially tasks you assign a specific user uh, to complete an action, let's say by next week. That means they'll receive an email from the system saying they have this action to complete by next week. And let's say that action that action goes overdue. We can set up the system so other people are notified on maybe overdue actions or pending actions. Notifications can be configured to how a client would want them. So that's just a really brief overlook of incidents. So there's a lot, there's a, a few more steps like investigation and action management within incidents that we're not going to touch on today, but I just wanted to show you how an incident form would look and how easy it would be for anyone to go onto the system and just report an incident and all they'd have to do is save and submit. Basically, an incident investigator will be notified then. So the next thing we're just going to briefly touch on is risk. So I'm just going to click on into our risk module and you can see I'm going to zoom out so you see the whole page here. You can see that it's in the format of a risk assessment. We get all our general information such as the title, the department on top and then we get to add our hazards below. So there's three hazards here I can see and you see it brings in their 
potential and consequences, people at risk, and then a risk calculator with control measures. So usually here, we'd set up a risk calculator on the system to match what you currently use or what you currently like to use. And once the risk calculator is up on the system, risk assessments can be created by anyone, anyone you give access to. So that's just a brief look at a, a risk assessment. If I was to click on this little PDF icon here, it's actually going to give me this risk assessment on a PDF where I can print it off or maybe just send it as, in an email to anyone that may require it. And you'll see that PDF icon pop up for a number of our modules, even the incident module forever for whenever you want to just print off a piece of information such as an incident or risk assessment. So the last module I want to touch on is just the audit and checklist module. So within the system, you're actually able to create any number of audit and checklists you'd like people to carry out on the system, or let's say you just want to track them on the system yourself and maybe carry out the audits yourself. So once I create an audit on the system, I can assign it to anybody. So that means I can assign it to any user with an email address and they'll get notified to complete this audit by whatever date I've assigned it on. Now I have a demo here set up, so I'm gonna go in as a general user and just complete an audit. So you can see here, they're all open text questions where I can just type in any information needed. So we can see here with the first question, do you generate air emissions? I can type in my answer to that. There are a number of different answer types on the system available, such as yes, no's, multiple options, and many more. But for today, all I've set up is just the open questions there. And you can see that there's this is quite a big audit here with 12 sections. And I can just go through that and complete the questions as needed. And on the right-hand side, you'll see our little actions button pop up again. So that means that we can actually attach actions to the specific audit. And underneath actions, we can always attach attachments as well. So I'm going to bring you back now. So that's the four modules I briefly wanted to touch on. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard section. Now, I'm going to bring you straight into the My Dashboard module. So that's, as I said before, it's sort of like a personal hub for everyone. So they can just access it and find out any information that I have to do, that I have to complete, or maybe that I need to know. So let's click on onto it, and I'll explain it in a bit more detail for you. So as soon as I click into that, my dashboard, I'll always see every action I have to do on the system. No matter where it is on the system, it'll bring me to the action tab and I'll be able to see a couple of folders. So what I first see here is my drafts, other audit and risk. So what these mean, my draft would be an action that let's say I've created, but I haven't set it live yet. Maybe I haven't I haven't completed some of the information and I needed to go away for a while. I can always save it as a draft and come back and edit it at a later time. Other would be a live action on the system. So anything that's not in this my draft folder is a live action that I have to complete. So it'll have a due date and all the information necessary. So I'm just gonna click into audit, let's say, and we'll see what kind of audit actions this user has. So we have three actions here. First thing you'll see is every action is giving given a unique action number. So AR, a couple of zeros and 16. Next to it, it's actually given us a link to the specific audit. So if I was to click on that, it's actually going to bring me to the to the specific audit that I have to complete. So let's say I just needed to find out some information on that audit that this action is related to. I just click on that link, maybe have a read of the audit, and then I'm ready to complete my action. All the other details are fairly straightforward, due date, and you can see it is highlighted red if it's overdue. So it's yesterday was the 18th of February, so I'll have to complete this pretty soon. And we can see other details such as the action title and if there was any details in there. So last, last couple of bits on this, you have two options here. You can comment on any action. So if I was to click comment, it's just going to bring up a box I can free text into, and let's say I just wanted to leave a comment on, on the action here. So I'm just gonna add a comment saying test. You can see it sends that data to the system, 
and that comment will be attached to the action itself. So that's updated, and let's see let's see where that comment went into. So we're going to click our audit section, scroll across, and we can see on the far right hand side that Michael commented on this on the 19th of February, and the comment was test. So all comments are actually tracked and updated instantly to the system. Now closing it off, very similar. Clicking close will bring up another comment box and a close date. So you can actually choose the date that you closed it on and add an attachment. Now, if I was to close this off, it would either be in the approval section. So let's close this off and show you what that means. I'm just gonna add test again. So as soon as I close anything off, that's that's removed from my dashboard as I've I've hit close, so I've pretty much completed the action. You can see it's it's no longer there. And if there's an approval process set up on the system, which we can do, it, that action will go straight to an action administrator, and they will get the option to accept or reject it based on what you've input. Now. We can set it up so actions can be closed off by general users as well as they see fit, and it's it's very optional to um to whichever way you'd want that set up. So that's pr that's the actions tab, and that's one of the big tabs on the system. So any user can manage their own actions and see what they have assigned to them at any time. And you can see there's a risk tab here, on, so I can see all the risk actions I've related to me, and you can see their number. Is slightly different it gives a CM before it and that's because it's a control measure so if I was to click on the audit it will give me an AR because it's from an audit report and so on so that's actions now I'm gonna take you through the other top tabs here which are tasks training risk audit and hazards Let's click on tasks now a brief overview of tasks. Tasks are essentially anything on the system that you've been assigned. So let's say an audit. You can see here this user has been assigned four audits that they have to complete by a couple of dates here. And we can see the audit numbers, the summary, and we can click onto any one of these and it'll take us straight to complete that audit. And I can also see that there's an investigation report here. So this indicates that the user I'm logged in as is an incident investigator. So you can see there's a number of incidents here that I've been assigned to the investigation. So I can click the exact same way as the audit and checklist. I can click on any of these and it'll take me to that incident investigation. So essentially the actions and tasks tab up here are telling any user what they have to do on the system, any tasks, any actions, what dates they have to do them by, and they'll always be able to complete them through the My Dashboard section. So they don't have to go looking in the audit module, the incident module. They can always just come straight here and go into any module they require and complete anything that's assigned to them. So there's another couple of modules I want to take you through. So they the rest of the top here, so training's the next one. So let's say I've been assigned training in the future. So what this actually does is it tells me of any upcoming training that I've been assigned to. So I can see that I have four training courses coming up. So some, uh, let's say a training administrator has signed me up to four courses. So we can see that there's one coming up in March and it's a fire extinguisher training and the location is Kirk. So we can, it just gives us an overview of what's coming up for us. Maybe we just need the basic details of what training we're attending in the near future. So next tab is risk. Very, very similar to training. So we can actually click on the risk tab here and see all of our risk training assigned to us. So you can see if I was to click on any of these, I can actually go straight into the risk assessment itself. So I'm gonna click on the first one here and that'll take me directly to the risk assessment. Maybe I need to check up some information on the risk assessment. And um, so I clicked on it here and I'm just gonna zoom out so you can just see the risk assessment and it's very similar to the one we clicked in before where we can see the hazards and the control measure information so back to 
the My Dashboard module. So last two sections are Audit and Hazards. So if I click into Audits here, it'll bring up every audit I've actually done on the system. Now, for an audit to pop up here, it would need to be approved by an administrator. So if I was to, let's say, click on the PDF icon on the far right hand side of your screen here, it actually downloads the PDF. And I can just have a look at any, any audit I completed in the past that I might need to check up on. So that's just a basic overview of how the audit section works here. It just shows you your general history of the audits you've completed on your health and safety system. So last section, hazards. So every user on the system, no matter what access they have, is given the opportunity to report a hazard. So you can see here, it gives me a list of my hazards. So it just tells me what hazards I reported in the past, uh, the status, if they're live or closed out, and the details there. So I'm going to hit report a hazard here. And all that allows me to do is actually report a hazard to this system. So I can type in, let's say, what's the hazard related to. I can put in a classification, which would be a drop-down list like this, and a category field, which could be a drop another drop-down. Now, all of these are editable fields, so they can be set up to your requirements. And you can see we can add details, attachments, and who reported it. So at the very bottom of the page, we can actually add action. So that's actually going to add a specific action to this hazard. Let's say you want to add an action to combat this hazard. You can add the action here and assign it to whoever you deem fit to complete that action. So that's how all the modules that I took you through sort of link into the My Dashboard module and how you, you can interact with them through the My Dashboard module as well. So I'm just going to take you out of that briefly. And the last thing I wanted to go through was just a brief outlook of reporting. So reporting on the system is a huge, huge function. So it allows you to pretty much uh, pull information on whatever modules you're using on the system. And there's a huge amount of reports you can avail of. So you can see I click into reports. I can see all the reports I have access to. So this user has access to, let's say, some training reports here. So I'm going to take you into, we'll go into training status by module. So what that means is it's going to give us uh, the training status by the modules we select. So the first thing you can see here is a filter option. So I'm just going to choose one site. And let's say all I want to see is the health and safety modules. And all I want to see is, let's say, one specific location or department. I can do that through the filter options here. And you're given three options below this, which are view report, print report, and download data. So I'm going to print report, first of all. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to download a PDF and give us a graphical output of what we selected in our filters. So you can see here, it actually gives us a pretty in-depth analysis through a, through a PDF of our training compliance and the courses we selected. So a brief, a brief outlook of what's compliant, scheduled, and non-compliant. Um, so there are multiple reports on the system. And you'll be able to generate PDFs and graphs such as that from, from all of them. So if I was to take you into any other of the reports, it would be a very, very similar outlook where you'd choose your filters and choose one of the options below. Now, that was print report. What does download data or view report do? So I'm going to hit view report and show you exactly what it does. So view report will, is, is going to bring up information on screen in front of us. So you can see here, it actually brings up a lot of information. with, And you can see the titles here. So basically, I'm allowed to click on any anything here that comes up, and that's a hyperlink to specific areas on the system. So that's what view report is. It brings up all that information on the page in front of you where you can just maybe have a scroll through. And if I was to click on any of these, it'll take me directly to that training course, let's say. Or if I looked up employees, it would take me straight to that employee. Now, 
download data does something similar, it will download all this data right in front of you that you filtered and put it on an Excel spreadsheet for you. So if I was to click download data, it's going to download all this information onto an Excel spreadsheet. So last thing I wanted to show you was subscribing to reports. So basically, once you've set your filters, and let's say you know the reports you need to receive every week, every month, rather than going into the system and let's say setting up your filters and clicking on the required buttons, you can actually automate this task. And I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom of the page and show you how. So you can set up a frequency. Let's say I want to receive this report every week or every month. And you can set up either the PDF or the spreadsheet to be emailed directly to your own email address. So that means that I'm gonna be emailed this PDF every week from now on. So if I was to hit subscribe to report, that's me subscribe to re that report. Now, if I wanted to unsubscribe from anything, it's very easy. So you can see this user, user has a report subscribed to them. So I just click on that little tab here, unsubscribe, and that would unsubscribe me from this report. So that's reporting at a real brief Look, and there are a lot of reports I could bring you through, but I'm just conscious of time now, and we're coming up to 5 to 11, and I know we wanted to go through a Q&A session. So I'm just going to um, leave you just maybe ask a few questions, and we'll answer them now in the next minute. Thanks very much for that, Mike. Um, so while we're waiting uh, to see if anyone has any additional questions there, uh, I've got a couple here myself that maybe we can go through and just get a couple answers to. Um, so in the vein of reporting there that we were just on, is there a limited... Um, so... So there, let me take you back to the reporting module. So with the reports you can subscribe to, there is no limit to the reports that you can uh, set up on your system here and subscribe to. You can see there are a lot of reports, but you might need to subscribe to any number of them. So let's say, let's say you've subscribed to up to 10, 20 reports. It's there's no there's no limit to any any number you can subscribe to, and they will be email to you pretty much whenever you've set set it up let's say weekly monthly and just just touching on that as well emails from the system so there is a daily digest that goes out to um to you once a day which will give you all your tasks and all your let's say actions that you have to do in the future and in the near future so you won't ever get overloaded uh, from notifications from the system so that's that's just to answer that brief question about subscribing to reports. Brilliant stuff. And, uh, Brilliant stuff. and uh, what about system notifications for incidents? Would that be included in the daily digest as well? So, incident notifications. So the one difference between notifications on the system, incident notifications are actually instant. So what I mean by that is, let's say you're an incident investigator. So you might need to receive an email pretty much straight away. Let's say any, a major incident happens. We've set it up so incident notifications go directly to you, let the investigator, as soon as they occur. Now, there are different categories and different fields we can set up. So maybe some incidents are, uh, let's say, more notifiable than others. We can set up a set it up so basically you're emailed only the high priority incidents instantly. So that's how that would work. Great. Um, just the last couple questions here. So when you're setting up employees, um, can you set them up so that they only complete tasks assigned to them? Now, okay. So I'm actually logged in as a pretty much a general user here with some administer function. So I'm going to just take you through what that would mean. So when you can set up any number of employees on the system and once they have an email on their employee profile, they can actually go onto the system 
and complete any tasks you've assigned to that employee profile. So an email is always necessary um, because the system will need to email them that they've received, let's say, an action to do by next week or an incident um, to incident investigation, let's say. So they all they'd have to do is set up their password, and once they're set once they're set up on the system, they just click into the My Dashboard module, and they'd be able to see all tasks assigned to them, no matter what they are. Let's say they're an action, they're an audit assigned to them, or incident investigation, like I took you through. So that's how that would work. Great. Great. Um, so we've got another question here, um, just more about document management. So. Um, how does the system cater for that um, policy development, review, and updates? Okay, okay, good question there. And I'm just going to see there's this. So you can specify what you want a user to see in the system. So I've set this user up pretty, um, pretty tightly. So I'm just going to see do we have, and we do. So documents, here we go. So we have a module dedicated for document management. So I'm going to click on documents here. And that's going to show me all documents I've access to. Now bear in mind this is a test site so I'm just going to click on let's say the insurance documents. So how this how this module works is you set up your own folders and categories which would be in a drop down list like this and you'll be able to attach any PDFs, any documents to any one of these categories and let's say put comments against them assign dates to them and when I mean assign dates let's say you need you know this uh, let's say insurance policy is expiring this time next year. So you're setting up someone to be notified that that document's going to be out of date and that someone needs to up update it uh, before this time next year. So notifications follow through with this module as well. So you can see here the folder section can be uh, set up to pretty much how you'd want it managed. At the minute this is a test site so we can see just it's a, just a very basic overview of a couple of folders here like a safety statement and you can grant anyone on the system access to um, to the document library and share down any documents you deem necessary for them to see or for them to get notified on. So that would be just a brief overview of document library but yeah that's it. Great. Um, so last couple of minutes here. Um, just finally, is there a help guide section um, that all users can access if they've got questions on the system or, or need some help? Yeah, yeah. So glad you asked about that. So you'll see on the left hand side, we can see an ask us button. So ask us, what does that do? So if I was to click on ask us, we have a lovely section here, which you can ask a question and fill in details and your email and that's going to send our lovely support desk an email from you detailing on what you want to know and when and basically any other questions you might have so basically they'll receive that and get back to you with an answer and pretty much any update on whatever you've asked but there's also another function here that I'd like to show you top right hand side search our knowledge base so that actually allows us to search for let's say any guides so I'm going to type in incident here and we have a massive section dedicated to guides let's say on the system so I clicked on entering lost time and you can see it's just a brief guide I can zoom in a bit free here now there's going to there are videos and guide sections here that you can just have a look through and see how the system works and basically answer any questions you might have or maybe you're having you're, tra you're training other users up on how to use the system you'll always be able to access this this help section here and it's constantly being added to depending on what what questions are being asked so that's just our help section there and how you can raise tickets instantly with our with our support team Brilliant, thanks. Um, so I guess just now that we're, we're about to wrap up here, thanks very much for sticking through on the demo. I know we're a little bit over time, but uh, hopefully it has some good information in there for you. So uh, basically we were recording um, the webinar, so if you have any questions or if there's something that you'd like to see again, 
We're actually going to send it on to all of you here uh, by the end of business today, uh, just so that you'll have the ability to review it. Um, and we've got another webinar coming up next Friday. It's going to be focusing on some different elements, so feel free to get on to that one as well. Thanks very much for your time, and uh, very much appreciate your interest. Hope you have a great weekend, and we look forward to chatting with you soon. Yeah. Enjoy the weekend, everyone, and thanks for coming.